Spelljammer is here. Do you like spells? Do you like jam? That's all I've got for an intro. There are six new races introduced in Spelljammer. Let's break them down in alphabetical order. Astral Elf. Finally, another elf subrace. Because we, uh, we don't got enough elf subraces in this game, right? So these guys have the usual elf stuff. Medium-sized, humanoid, 30-foot walking speed, dark vision, and advantage on saving throws against being charmed. Then you get proficiency in perception, the best skill in the game, and the new astral trance, which is like the old elf trance, but better. Like normal, you don't need to sleep and magic can't put you to sleep, but also, when you finish a short rest, you can choose one skill or weapon or tool and gain proficiency with it. Emphasis on skill here. Astral Elves are the only elves that can get skills this way. That means you can adjust your talents to suit whatever you're going to be doing. If you're going to be tracking a monster, grab survival. If you're going to be sneaking around, grab stealth. It's a solid ability and it rewards planning ahead. Plus, weapon and tool proficiencies can come in useful. Then you get Starlight Step. Bonus action, magically teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied place you can see. It's basic, a slightly worse version of the Eladrin Elf and Shadar Kai teleport ability, but that doesn't mean it's not amazing. Teleporting is good, either for escaping grapple or getting into melee range, or teleporting 30 feet above someone and landing on their head, knocking them prone. Finally, there's Astral Fire. You get one cantrip from Dancing Lights, Light, or Sacred Flame. High Elves can take any cantrip they want, so this is a bit more restrictive, but Sacred Flame is a good damaging cantrip, and it's the one you'll take 90% of the time. Melee builds appreciate a ranged option, and it gives Bards their new highest damaging cantrip. Astral Elves are really good, but not broken. A solid option for Bards, Fighters, Paladins, and rogues. Mainly, it's the skill buff that sets them apart from other elves. A minus out of 10. Auto Gnome. These cheeky little clankers are mechanical beings. Robots, basically. You're small, you're a construct, not a humanoid, and your walking speed is 30 feet. You resist poison damage, you're immune to disease, and you have advantage on saving throws against being paralyzed or poisoned. Like Warforged, you can take a long rest in six hours of inactivity, where you are still conscious but you can't move. That's good for keeping watch, and you get two tool proficiencies of your choice. The best options here are probably Thieves' Tools and the Disguise Kits, or you can be a Giga Chad and take Glassblower's proficiency. Their big ability is Armored Casing, letting you calculate your AC as 13 plus dex. It's like you're always under the effect of Mage Armor. This is going to be amazing for dex-based fighters, rogues, and rangers. Then, with Built for Success, you can add 1d4 to any attack roll, ability check, or saving throw after seeing the roll. It's basically retroactive guidance. You can do that a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest, for a little buff to any critical roll. Finally, if Mending is cast on you, you can spend a hit die and regain some hit points. This is the first ever kind of healing cantrip, and seeing as most games never use hit dice anyway, this is just free regeneration. Also, you can benefit from a bunch of other healing spells that don't normally work on constructs, like Cure Wounds and Healing Word. These fellas look like they'll make great rangers, rogues, and fighters, but they'll be a good choice on anything. Solid race, well-balanced and really cool. B plus out of 10. Welcome to Space Jail. You are accused of the following crimes. One, using a probability torpedo to turn an alien fleet into a flock of seagulls. Two, laughing at the phrase space penal system. <laughs> Three, literally blowing up a planet. Objection! That's the whole point of Waystar. What? Waystar, the ultimate D&D sci-fi expansion Kickstarter where nothing is off limits. Four books deep, with everything you could imagine and more. Prisoner seems to believe we're in some kind of epic D&D expansion. Permission to terminate requested. I got drunk with a space monkey in a tuxedo! And I got a free hard copy adventure for pledging within 72 hours! Okay, buddy. So this Kickstarter, full of epic races, monsters, weapons, and mech suits, is also giving out a free hard copy adventure to any physical pledge made within the first 72 hours. Yeah! Totally believable. Terminate in five seconds. It's true! I fell in love with a woman made entirely out of blue ooze, and it was the best sex of my life! <laughs> Back Waystar, the incredible sci-fi TTRPG based on 5e rules today on Kickstarter to get a free PDF and print copy of the adventure Steal the Stars. Waystar is everything you need to run fast-paced, high-octane, ridiculously fun space adventures. Get your copy right now by clicking the link below. GIF 
or GIF if you want to start an argument on Imga. Motherfucking hippo people, baby, and hippos are the deadliest land animal, humans included. You are humanoid, medium-sized, and have a walking and swimming speed of 30 feet. Hippo build means you have advantage on all strength-based ability checks and saving throws, and you count as one size larger when calculating the weight you can carry, push, drag, or lift. All very useful on grappling builds. But the really cool thing is firearms mastery. You have a mystical connection to firearms. Proficiency in firearms, ignore the loading property of all firearms, and attacking at long range with a firearm doesn't impose disadvantage on your attack roll. Hippo Sniper. It's going to be a thing. Obviously, this is only as good as the weapons your DM allows, but even if they only allow Renaissance-era firearms, the most basic firearms in the game, that still gives you a 1d12 piercing 120-foot ranged weapon. Miles better than any other ranged weapon when you don't have to load it. In a game that doesn't allow feats, which are an optional rule, this is the best ranged option. If your game is open to modern weapons, the hunting rifle is a 2d10 piercer at a range of 240 feet. Level 5 Fighter Action Surge gives you 8d10 plus 16 damage, and of course if your DM allows futuristic weapons, this thing is just insane. Everyone gangster, till the hippos start shooting. You also get Astral Spark, which lets you deal extra damage equal to your proficiency bonus when you hit an enemy with a weapon attack. It's not a lot of damage, but you can do it a number of times per day equal to your proficiency bonus. So at level 9, that's 16 extra damage across the day. I see GIF as amazing fighters, rangers, and bards. They really have a niche that no other race fills. A very clean A out of 5. How does he? Flying squirrel monkeys. These fellows are humanoid, have a 30 foot walking and climbing speed, and can be medium or small. They have dexterous feet, letting you use a bonus action to manipulate an object, lift a tiny object, or open or close a door with your feet. However, at your DM's discretion, you might be able to use this to activate magic items. There's another race in this book which has a very similar ability, but it specifies it can't be used to activate magic items. How does he have no such restraint? So at your DM's discretion, you may be able to do stuff with a bag of holding or an ever-smoking bottle as a bonus action on your turn. Then you can also glide, as long as you're not incapacitated and you don't have heavy armor. For every one foot you descend, you can glide five feet horizontally at no movement cost to yourself. So if you use your 30-foot movement speed to climb a tree or a pillar and then jump off, you can move 150 feet on your turn without using any action. That's pretty insane movement speed. And of course, if you have a fall from 500 feet in the air, you can move 2,500 feet in a single turn. Then you can also use your reaction to reduce any fall damage you would take to zero. You can also exploit this for 150 feet worth of movement at level 1. I've made a short about it, but don't do it! It's broken! Finally, you've got hazardy resilience. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to roll a d6, add your proficiency bonus to it, and reduce the damage you would take equal to that total. This stacks with Barbarian's Rage, which can halve incoming damage, and then this feature can reduce it even more, leading to some insane tanking power. At level 1, a CR-17 Adult Gold Dragon could slap you with a claw attack, and a Hazardy Barbarian would, on average, take nothing. Or at least until it decides to, to breathe fire on you instead. Still, it's a nice bit of tankiness, also useful for reducing incoming damage to help you pass important concentration checks as a spellcaster. How does he make great barbarians, wizards, sorcerers, warlocks, and bards? They don't have many abilities, but the ones they do have are pretty good. A solid A out of 6. Plasmoid. Ooze people are here, and they just want a big hug, and to crawl through your open, screaming mouth and suffocate you from within. You are amorphous. You can squeeze through a space as narrow as one inch wide, as long as you are naked, and you have advantage on grapple checks. You are also medium or small, your choice, and you have a 30-foot walking speed. Then there's dark vision, always nice. You can hold your breath for one hour, and you have resistance to poison and acid damage, and on saves against the poison condition. Final ability is is shape self. As an action, you can reshape your body to resemble a human with four limbs and a head, or just be a shapeless blob. Which I guess might impact your ability to wear armor, the book doesn't really say. Then, as a bonus action, you can extrude a 10 foot long pseudopod, basically a tentacle, and use it to manipulate an object. It can't attack, activate magic items, or lift an object weighing more than 10 pounds. And the fact that they specified that kind of implies that the Hadazi ability can. 
Even so, Plasmoid's grappling advantage makes them great on grappling builds. I'm sure there's some cool ideas here with a grappling fighter or a grappling paladin. The other abilities are mainly flavorful and work well for any class. Another solid B plus out of three. Three keen. You know, I'm pretty keen on these three. Yes, I know it's Thrycreen, but that was that that was the best joke I could come up with. It's very warm in the UK right now. So these guys are amazing. One, you're a monstrosity. Great for dodging a bunch of nasty effects like hold person and dominate person. Two, like the auto gnome, your base AC is 13 plus dex, thanks to your hard carapace. But also, your carapace can change color to camouflage you in with your background, giving you advantage on stealth checks. Three, dark vision is awesome. Four, secondary arms. This is the big one. You have two smaller arms that you can use to wield a light weapon in addition to whatever you're carrying in your main arms. That gives you a potential 2d6 great sword as your main attack, and then you can follow it up with a 1d6 short sword bonus action attack. That's big damage right from level one. Your walking speed is 30 feet, you can be medium or small, and you don't need to sleep. Perfect for keeping watch at night. Finally, you can transmit your thoughts to willing creatures you can see within 120 feet of you. They don't need to share your language to talk like this, and they can talk back. So, you can act as a telepathic relay network for your entire party, meaning nobody ever has to speak while you're out on missions. There are tons of uses for telepathy. It's just really good. These guys are amazing rogues. You have advantage on stealth checks, your AC is better than studded leather, and you can speak without making any noise. They're also amazing fighters and barbarians, with the two-handed heavy weapon plus light weapon combo. Or a one-handed weapon, a shield, and an off-handed weapon. These guys are A++ tier. They are definitely pushed, and the absolute best race choice for certain builds. But speaking of new builds, introducing the Sky Domain Cleric giving you your own flying pet weasel who can be temporarily immortal all in this month's issue of the DM's secret weapon. There's also tons more and bonus videos. You can check that out by clicking the link up here or down there. I also want to shout out my boy Fry Minis on YouTube, an awesome content creator who you gotta check out if you like D&D minis or just D&D in general. He's a great guy on his way to 5k subs and he helped me out by getting me a look at this book early so I could make this video. I've linked his channel down below, go say hi, because comments break the YouTube algorithm. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and I'll see you next time.